Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls top midfielder. Oh, let me start over again. <laughs> Alright. Hi, I'm Marla Setman, Reggae Girls top midfielder, and you're here on Ryan FC and Elite Sports. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to keep up all to date with Reggae Girls and Reggae Boys top news. My name is Earl Stevens, former international player and reggae boy, and you're watching Elite Sports TV, Ryan, LFC. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date to get the latest content on the reggae boys football. Bless. Hi, my name is Tiffany Cameron, Reggae Girls Top Striker, and you are watching Ryan LFC YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Oh, I'm Def Damir. This is Boom Boom, aka World Boom, the Billboard Selector. I'm here to represent for Ryan LFC to get the latest Reggae Boys content. Just hit that like and subscribe button. And the Operation Ball Game, I say, knock it, Ryan. Yes, people, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good night, whenever you're watching about the interview and the replay. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share your thought down in the comment section. People, when you know I've been a couple months well, you guys ask me, you already know now the job Davis interview and thing. People, let me tell you this, people. Um, Sometimes things happen and things don't work out, but I think this is the right time we meet up in. Jazz Davis, and we're I'm going to share him story, people. So, good evening, sir. Welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a long time coming. Um, you've been trying to get this thing going for a long time, but schedules and everything else. I'm very happy to be here, my friend. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. But all your family doing and stuff, man. Everything is good. Not a complaint. The young ones are doing well, and um, it's good to have family. Most important thing, man. But it has been six months since I leave Sports Max. Oh, life. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. Since I leave Sports Max, I still watch it because I still like the um, the girl from Trinidad and, yeah, former co-host. But, <laughs> no, man, seriously, man. I think it brings... I don't become used to... Same thing when football GPS, when uh, we know I can leave. I just never interested to watch it. And the same thing... I don't know. I don't know, but now nah, I like, still, brother. In the media, the man them always say me about the media man. Them, so I even reach out to the media man, the man them say, I'm not in interview with me because I get them in a trouble and all of them things. But, brother, if I tell you the truth, I have a different respect and love for you and Wayne Walker because only build something great in a Jamaica. You understand? And even world chase it too, but from the other day, I kind of lose half a world chase it still. Straight up. <laughs> Yeah, but let's get into it, my brethren, man. Um, tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up in Jamaica. Well, um, I grew up between Old Harbour in St. Catherine and Spanish Town. Yeah, I spent uh, a lot of I was born in Spanish Town. Um, and I spent much of my, between, between birth and, say, about, about, 21 when I moved on to UTEC. I, I, I was on the on, on Farkas and all at UTEC for, for that stretch. For birth to 21, it was between all of a Spanish town. Most of my time spent in Spanish town. I know everywhere, every nook and cranny, every, every garrison, every upscale area. I talk about Peace Stone, Mount View up there, you know, Tars Pen, Elizabeth Pen, um, Winter Pen. You know what I mean? All of those places. And, uh, you know, Dallas Lee and all, all of the madman places. And have friends there. A, a lot of the guys who are, who have stores, have small establishments in Spanish town. Manua, Higla, who also in Spanish streets. I used to go to school with them because I went to Jonathan Grand High. I went to Marlemont Primary. Um, I got through with exams at grade five and then I went to Jonathan Grant. And I, I, I had a, very good schooling because one of the things I always said was that if you have a solid education, then 
you will ward off some of the disrespect that normally comes to people and even your own school. I realized very early that, guess what? You see, if you're athletic, the youth, them, man, them around you will respect you. Um, mm-hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're good with the book, the girl, them, will like you. And if you're good with the book, to the teacher, them will respect you. So from very, very early, there's two things they are free, yeah? Sports and book. Never had a badness business, which was, it was easy to get into, given that I have a huge family. And you don't know, so most of the youth we get involved in a, in a, in a madness. And because most of them are packeted, so you know, they can diss a man and run yeah. home and how could defend it or a brother defend it or a father defend it. I had that, but I never, I've never been involved in any altercation of any kind. Yeah, because I just book, schoolwork, and sports, and the honeys. That's all I, that's all the free when we're there school, man. Yeah. But what is it like financial go to school, though? And it's all amazing. I think you go to Kingston College or you go to them. People top. always think so. People always think so. <laughs> no, man, I was, I was, I, I was okay. Um, I was raised by my, my, my granny. And uh, my father died when I was nine. And uh, I, I, never, I, I never grew up with my mother. So I was like in a house that had produced three children before me. Um, who by the time I got into my own, these were adults who had left the house. So the great thing for me was that I inherited a lot of books at home. Not about books and books and books, books on every subject, books on chemistry, alchemy, biology, books on relationship, books on family life, books on sports, books on world history, books on politics. So I would just immerse myself in books. I may be still the only little youth where them granny have a customer and tell them to them read too much. Because that's my granny's a customer every day. It's a great thing in the house. I read every day. You want me care? I'll go outside like everybody else. No, I read, 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 read. So that's what gave me a, a huge advantage in many things in school. I was always the one in school who was reading for the class. I was always the one challenging the teacher the most. I was always the one pushed into leadership positions because, you know, the teacher then said, boy, this man well-rounded and this man well-read and everything else. And there are many people, right, who, if I tell them that my parents, that I didn't have parents who were professors, uh, doctors of this or that, 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 them, 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 if I told them otherwise, they wouldn't believe them. I said, no, man, the man, the mother and father, professor, this, that, 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 man, and tell them this and instill this and think, no, not like that. I was just a person who loved reading and loved books and lost myself in reading and books. And I was the one who, if there was something that I never knew, and I read up on it, I would just lose myself in it. So, for instance, I'd go to the library on a Saturday. You know, most men go to the library on a Saturday, and they go look to a girl in the high school. And, you know what I mean? You know the thing, no? Um, but I would go to the library to actually read. Yeah? So, and, 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 and this is what draw the girl in the because a girl in the city walk on the table, and she has her books in front of her, and she sees for the whole time your head just knowing that you're a book. Oh, 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 oh. So, I said, no, man, so that you can have freedom, you know, and it was a try initiate conversation with you and then, you know what I mean? Give you an E and you know, if you have a game, you go on clear. So that was just me. A lot of books and sports was all around me. Funny thing is, I, I'll tell you this quickly. My first love and my greatest love where sport is concerned is not even football now. It's horse racing. I love horse racing going to bed. And let me explain. Usually when you say that, people think they love gambling. I've been involved in horse racing for 30 odd years. And I can't tell when last one by a bit, and I can't count from one hand how many times I've ever gambled. I love the game. I love the horses. The fact of an animal will weigh 1,200, 1,300 pounds with the capacity to run at 40 miles per hour, being controlled by a little man or a little lady, jockey, whose body weight is 98 pounds, and all they have on is a, is a vest to protect them ribs and vital organs if they fall and have on a helmet. They have on nothing else and have a whip in their hand. And they travel on this horse and they can manipulate and control it. Horse racing is the only sport where two athletes are working together at the same time. There's no other sport like that. Every other sport is a man and a machine. The closest thing is a man. is a is farming on one then. Or motor GP where a man ride a bike or a man drive a car. But these are inanimate objects. A, a horse racing is the only sport where two athletes, a horse is an athlete, it's an equine athlete, the human being, the jockey, is an athlete. It's the only sport where two athletes are working together at the same time. And it's marvelously fascinating. I've learned more through horse racing, from horse racing, than any other, te- than any teacher would have taught me 
for all of the levels of schooling that I've gone gone through. And I can I I, I can I can explain that if, if you want to know that. I can prove to you why it is that the thing is so endlessly fascinating even now. Fair enough. But so so how you get in love with ass racing is by reading the book. Alright. Funny funny thing. So as a little youth, I was a prodigious reader, as I told you. So I started one day, I was reading the Gleaner at home. And in the sports section of the Gleaner, normally after you see so, so the front page, you so see the, the, the big stories on the front page. When you flip inside, usually they used to print it that way back in the day, not anymore. There used to be a grid, a matrix yeah. of selections by tipsters. So came out as well, what if people that tip, a forecast, what will win, blah, 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 the, the respective races. So you'd have a grid with the tipsters selections for each race. And then beneath that, you'd have the declarations, the horses running in the various races with the jockeys and the train and the distance and all of things. So when I used to look at it as a five-year-old, I remember what I was the first time, I never understood it. We can't read everything else in the paper, you know, as, as, as a five-year-old, read what I could and understood. But when I look for anything endlessly, I can't understand. And every time I looked on the paper and cert- look in the paper on certain days, I would see this thing. And it just fascinated me. I mean, determined to never find out what this was or understand what it was. And that's where my curiosity started. It proves that when I encounter something that I don't know, I throw my all into it until I understand it. And if I appreciate none of it, I'll hold on to it. If not, move on to something else. So that was how it started. It wasn't anybody who introduced me to it. It wasn't anybody who was a youth. I raised in your fellow. It wasn't anybody in my family. Nobody in my family watched horse racing or listened to horse racing or no, not more than horse racing. My granny used to go track back in the day when she used to live in Almanto. But she used to tell me them stories long after. So it was just me and my fascination. And then what, what really helped it now was that the names of horses were some fascinating things. Then and now. Yeah, but let me keep the story at the start. So that was my fascination, just reading the names of the horses and then trying to understand little by little. And the more I understood, the more the light in my brain about this thing, the light got bigger and brighter and bigger and brighter. And then I was just hooked on the game itself. No, my personal library at my home, I have a lot of horse racing books that I've bought over time. That people who have been in the game for a long time have given me because they've no passion for the thing. So I read the thing, the business side, the equine side, everything. The diagrams of tracks in North America, in Europe, in, in far flung places of the world, all of them things. It, 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 it's just a passion of mine. All right. Then research, I woke up on a quote. You said, ass racing and sports in general, football, track and field, ass racing get the most criticism. Oh, you come by that. Well, well, here's the thing. All right, just as I said to you, when you're a little youth, right, and you say you love football, all right, that's safe. Nobody has anything bad to say about that. You say you love track and field, same thing. You say you love cricket, same thing. You say you love basketball, same thing. Baseball, if you live in the States. Or you love, well, the likes of NFL, because I will never call that some football. Can football that, yeah? Some say American football, then, right? Or you love ice hockey or whatever. All safe sports, everybody accepts you as loving that and look for you as a good youth who just love a sport. When you say you love horse racing, you know, the first thing somebody comes to somebody's mind is that you're a gambler and you're worthless and you know, the better for with your life and what kind of worthless things you, 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 you get yourself involved in. I face that a lot. I mean, when you're in high school and you know, in first form, teacher go around the room and say, okay, tell me a little bit about yourself, tell me what you want to become, tell me what are your interests. I used to always say, Lord God, never tell them some of the horse racing, everybody will laugh and look at me funny, like, what kind of fool is this that I'm a gambler and teacher start free and I say, I'm wearing a horse racing, that means in taking lunch when I go my race after and he now pay attention at school because he love that. So there is this negativity, this blanket of negativity that people from used to wrap people in horse racing in. From the get-go? From the get-go. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Listen, command in chief, you know, Com- command in chief, you know, and that set of family, my set of family, them and things. Yeah, yeah. The first time I went, the other day I go to Jamaica and went to the chuck and thing. And it was just amazing, you know, always hearing it over on the radio. I may tell the man him over there, say, yo, I have to come back and came and ask for But I just love it, brother. It's just. Everybody just receive your well and they ask the man and say, yo, be careful where you walk and thing. And for see that big, every something there. 
when the man ever tell me say yo this can run fast you know and the man say yo I'm show you and the man bring it out upon the track and me I tell you so it was like a morning walk they they, mm -hmm. they I get that I mean I say yo John all these things I go says and the close I think come to me yo, clum, clum, clum. and the speed <laughs> the, yo, how could you believe it yeah man you know let me tell you this let me tell you this there are so many things as I say I learned let me give some examples quickly there was one day I was in maybe grade eight and we had a social studies teacher who loved to just come to class and ask questions randomly. We're not, we're not necessarily have to do with anything that she has taught before or anything yeah. that she's teaching now, but she likes to know, say, yeah, follow current affairs, right? Yeah. So she said, who in here can tell me what is perestroika? P-E-R-E-S-T-R-O-I-K-A. So me a man in a school, me answer every question. The people used to tire of me and say, Lord God, judge, you're next one a chance. Me answer, well, what, what may I give them a chance and I won't get the answer wrong? You know that? So after a while, we, we cultivate this style now. We just build until I look around the room and everybody else now go. They say, all right, no, 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 all right. So I did that that morning. Hands yeah. up after nobody no answer. She says, she rolled her eye like, yes, Lord God, judge again. Yes, George. Do you know what Perry Striker is? Grade 8, you know, second form. I started high school at age 10. So I would have been about 11, 11 at the time. So I said to her, yes, perestroika refers to the reform of the Soviet economic system following the collapse of, of communism and the collapse of, 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 of the Soviet Union. And now they're trying to make the former Soviet bloc into individual countries, and with that, they have to change up the economic structures. The woman looked at me like, there's space we come from. Sir. And the class, highly got them and said, well, we just got so like Chinese language I talk about you. You understand? And she said, how you know that? She said, how you know that? And I said, well, there is a horse at Cape Annals Park named Perry Striker. And the name fascinated me. And so I went to the library. And I researched and I found a book that had what Perry Striker was. And then in the news, there is there has been in the news I even then, that was when the, the Soviet social the Soviet system um, was, was collapsing under Mikhail Gorbachev and then turn what was the union of Soviet Social Republic USSR into Ukraine and Belarus and Russia and Estonia and all the countries that you know now. That was the time when that period was happening. So they're hearing the news every day. So I made the link because the horse name so I know the horse, the horse is a grey horse trained by Kenneth Mattis. So I made the association. I'm like that, you know. I know something from one area, I research it, I make a link, and it never leaves me. So that's what. And the woman from the day, the woman used to give me a hard time. I'm a superstar that woman there. Because she said, no, man. Because she feels that she comes with a question now. We're going to dismantle the whole class. You know, nobody now going to know. I may explain to her. And the woman thinks I'm a yellow like a space to come from. That's one example. Another one, Omar Kayam. That's O M A R, Omar, you know, regular name, and then K H A Y Y A M. There was a horse that came out of Spark called Omar Kayam. And I was fascinated with what is Omar Kayam I mean. So again, got me live, where I'm a dig, 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 I'm a find some. Omar Kayam was the man, was a man, one of the greatest. Muslim or Islamic poets in a history, arguably the greatest Islamic poet in history. So he was a poet, he was a writer, he was a mathematician, he was a philosopher. And his contribution to algebra is fundamental. He was the man who, how should I say, he was the man who articulated the foundation of what we call the quadratic equation. You understand? Yeah. So I would never forget that. And if I, if I never heard anything, I would go big and find that and you would know Omar, who Omar Kayan was. There's another horse named Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb, again, fascinated by the name, research it. Aurangzeb was the name of the man who ruled what is now India. When the man did Parana, they had some brothers and things. But even night the man got him, the man dreams that he brother them, kill him and take the throne. So the man murder him two oldest brothers. And his littlest brother, and they love him enough, so he's so happy. 
in dreams, he said, brother, they were killing him too, you know, but he said, no, I love him too much, he can't kill him, he said, exile him, he said, he'll go far, and the man got in bed, and dreams, the little brother come back, come kill him, and send some man, go way, 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 go kill the little brother, you yeah, understand, that was our answer, so I'm just giving you some examples of the things, horses' names, that mm -hmm. I came across, that my fascination led me to research, and gave me more knowledge and put me in a position to be able to articulate things about them. Things I otherwise would not have known outside of hospital. So the meaning most of the time of the ass, more uh, grab your attention, the name of the ass would have grab your attention so you go do the research. If the name is not something common, because no horse have some common foo foo, they want to put something together. But some people, they really put thought into the names of their horses. And when you dig out fine, you realize a rat in this means something, it means something significant. Wow. Oh, learn something new today, Bridget. Learn something new. <laughs> you said 30 years in a in a in a in a in a ass racing stuff. 30 years. Whoa. Yeah, man. From, from high school years so proud. You love every minute of it. Every minute of it, even now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's that that that's is very good, Bridget. And Bridget, medieval, you see. While me I do the research, Bridget, because what I do, I read and then me go listen back some old interview with you and stuff to get an understanding where you're at and yeah. realize. I'm a book up on even, me never know, say you're big in a politics, you, you, you interview a lot of politicians and things and all of them stuff. There. So all of them things as a youth, you have this knowledge from your youth, I read a whole heap of different books, so you're, you know, box in one place. No, man, because you see, you see, you see what, what, back in the day, you know, as a little youth, there was a man who lived further up the road from the name Mr. Christie. Older man, he was a contractor, but he got a stroke and he retired. So my granny used to cook for him. So mm -hmm. she would cook at our house and then she would cheer his hands and bring this to Mr. Christie. Because a good man to her, I think. So I would bring it. So that man, that man buy the gleaner every day. Because as I said, a old man, he have a stroke, he walk with a stick, smoke him cigar. He now not more for, much for the boat, eating food. Later in the house, come for the veranda, read him greener, smoke him cigar, and go back in, repeat and repeat every day. So he had a lot of old newspapers stored up. So when I go check in, I bring the food for him, and he might eat, I sit down, and I go through some old newspapers. I read the paper, I read the paper, and I read the paper for them. So it became a habit, reading the paper and gathering knowledge. So I must tell you that in school, so Marlebone Primary, then Jonathan Grant, when I left Jonathan Grant, I was valedictorian, I was senior prefect, then I went to St. Joseph's in Halfway Tree. I was head boy. Um, I went to, I mean, the people in Lightning. So they sent me to World Young Leaders Conference in D.C. in about 98, about 98, work up here, 98. Um, I can tell you, so I school, school 99, um, go home, go watch Man U beat up Barca and I jumped and think final 2 one day, you know? Yeah, uh, that, was, I, that was during that period. Um, so after I leave Jonathan Grant now, I went to, uh, the, one of the best decisions ever my crown is that immediately after high school, I, when I left Jonathan Grant, I was 15 years old right, when I graduated. So that's why I had to go to St. Joseph's. Right? So by the time I finished with St. Joseph's, now I'm 17. So I got a job as a heart trainee at a place in Spanish Town called Industrial Chemical Company. Most people from Spanish Town with a start factory. Mm -hmm. That was a big decision I made because it, it gave real world experience as a young youth. You know, you are dealing with adult situations, you are dealing with adults, you are learn how to make systems work, you are learn how to conduct yourself in a professional environment. So by the time we touch university now, I started youth when I was 18, going on 19. I applied to do administrative management. Not because I wanted to do administrative management, but I just wanted to get into the university. And throughout UTEC, I mean, UTEC was a fascinating place. It gave me a lot of opportunities. I was, I went to, at UTEC, I spent four years. I studied marketing and international business. I have degrees in marketing and international business, not media. Didn't study media. And at UTEC, I really made use of a lot of opportunities at the university to provide. I provided. I went to three world universities debating championships. First one in Singapore. Second one in a South Africa, one place named Stellenbosch. No, the first one in South Africa, Stellenbosch. Second one in Singapore, and the third one in Malaysia. Through debating Caribbean competitions and international competitions, I went to every continent in the world 
to debate except South America. I've never been to South America. But we go everywhere. We go Asia, we go Africa, we go Europe, we go all both. Yeah, so man. Debate. Eh? What is the debate boat? All right. For world championships debate you know. Unlike the debate where you know, our most people know where you have two teams. Opposition yeah. and proposition. And you get a topic from over 90, you cover your popular topic and you come. Mm-mm. And that's an international debate work. World Championship debate has four teams in one debate. Then we split the team then into government side and opposition side. So you have one team comprised of two people. So one team is opening government, other team is closing government. One team opening opposition, other team closing opposition. So a four team, a five fit come first in a debate. How it work? You know, a big room. So we're talking about world championships debate in Iran. Mm. All the great universities that you can think of, them have representatives here. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Oxford, Cambridge, this, that, 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 them, you, them, them people, you are not this with, you are fight with, for, for debate, right? Uh, everybody in one room. So, first of all, they put up on one big screen, they put up the, the teams that are in particular matches. The team, the draw, the draw. They do a draw, and Pete tells them, say, well, all right, in this debate, you have Cambridge A, Oxford D, University of Technology A, and University of Monash A. Monash are one of the top universities in Australia. So the four teams there. So you still don't know, and you look for the position where you get in a debate if you are opening government, closing government, opening opposition or closing opposition. Then, they give you the topic just come up on the screen, just so. So the topic is like, the topic could be like, this house believes that the glass is half full. That would be a topic in the brother. This house believes the glass is half full. And then, you have 15 minutes after the topic come up on the screen, to yeah. find the room where you're going to debate in it and start the debate. If you reach 15 minutes, if you reach later than 15 minutes, I'm lucky or they automatically lose. So you have 15 minutes to walk with a teammate. Remember, them, them things keep us on huge university campuses, you know, when you don't know, you know. Then you walk up, you know, so you have to read the map and they say, all right, we have to say, what we have to say? Uh, all right, we'll go first. This time that they have planned the speech, this host believes the glass is half full. Or they link it to some global events, some current affairs, some, some, some. So I study, I study the video. So you don't know what the topic is and then you see it on the screen and then you have 15 minutes after the topic comes on the screen, prepare a speech and go on the debate. If you're not good, you can't survive my youth. <laughs> so I did three of those. I did three of those. I'm going to look Caribbean intercal competitions. So win Caribbean intercal with UTEC first and UTEC ever win that the competition that would be. And I was on Students' Union. I was the vice president of the Students' Union in charge of public relations. The coach football at UTEC to the brother. Under my hand, the school of business, my school in the UTEC, they won the women's football competition. I coached them that year. And uh, yeah, oh, before you tell it to me, I skipped something. High school, so, so I played school boy football and I run a chance. Yeah, that's right. So, but I feel like something out there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I played school boy football. And yeah, you know, I'm play, I'm, yeah, man. Where you run? 100 or 200? One, two, four by one, four by four. Back in the days, I used to make you with the 25 event until they drop down. Them days. Wow. Wow. So who's trying to prefer? Football or track and field? Playing? Um, Do- play? No, man. Football, man. Football, man. Okay. Okay. Football. So, so um, how many seasons you playing, man, in cup? No. So, one. One. One, one season, man. Remember, say, remember, say, no, I read a book where I read them. But by the time I reach up a fifth farm, man, 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 say, yo, you know what I mean? So, I give them my strength. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, so it's always a book thing, a year thing. Yeah, and man, that comes first, that comes first, brother. Okay, okay, okay. All right, Listen, so... You see, you see, hold on, let me cut you. You see, hey, you have to understand, you know, remember, you know, me go to Jonathan Grant, you know, and no, for most of the guarantee you would come out of the school, you know. Yeah. In any of the school, you know, it's hard to get respect, you know. You get, you get respect if you're a bad man. For sure, people fear you, you come from the bad place, them. You know? yeah. But me, I'm going to be free from long time, see, so, yo, this book thing, yeah, it works. So if you carry yourself, like, you're not an idiot, you're a fool, and you're strong for them because you can relate to the youth, then maximum respect for you. So that is what I use to, to, to throw the time 
so that you know the man that looks over where but fuck that you that chest out of a tech way more them thing they never do it and enough people have been there too. Yeah. All right. Sir. So um, you say you went to university, you spent four years. So oh you went to university, so oh you you get in media two thousand and five and you never go to uh, university to study and all of them stuff there. Watch this, watch this. So I got uh by the time I was winding down in university, final year, right? Oh by the way. The first interview I saw for do a formal interview, I mean do it with Jeremy yeah. Mason who, who did a couple years ago, because they were the two stars at UTEC at the time. I saw for a, 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 a run up and uh, a mash up the place at the time, and that was before he broke the world record for the first time at Athens. Yeah? So uh, we did uh, an interview the other day. I used to run the school newspaper. At the time, we had it on the library, Calvin McCain Library, so I used to deal with the thing, and we used to have online radio. We used to deal with that too, uh, that too as well, so, you know, deal with the thing. This, you know? Good use, I'm, I'm, I'm a G from long time, you know what I mean? The man there, you see, the, the, the thing with that stuff is, and even you see, the man there, the man there know you, the man there see you in a crowd, and wait for you to hear them. And no place to go up and there, they have to stand up, and I'm here, man, push me. Are, are, are slap in the back of me and look at me there. I said, hey, boy, you know what I mean? I saw them on the world. See, I was just them on. Anyway, so when UTEC was finishing now, you know, everybody said, all right, the way I will do afterwards. So I'm going to line up themselves. So I had applied to and gotten accepted to study, to do a master's degree in history at a university in Scotland. See? All right. Get me acceptance, everything. I mean, boom. So I'm here to myself, I said, right, where do we have a master's degree in our history? See, I got Scotland, my youth. There's a place that's cool and, you know what I mean, you go face racism and you have to tell a man about, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Look at man for I say, S-Y-M. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, no, I can't do that. So I thought about it and I said, you know, no, I want to stay in Jamaica and I want to work in media. Because clearly the things that I was doing up to that point made me a natural fit, I thought, for media. So the lady who was in charge of the debating society at UTIC, a lady named Heather Hogarth Smith, she was a mentor for the debating society. Men are used to reason. So I told her, I said, I said, yes, sir, you're up. Men are going, she said, you're mad. She said, you're mad, but I wanted to do the law degree. My youth, they would have killed me. Everybody said, you know, if you go do law, if you go do law, if you go do law. I said, no, we want to do law. And then I said, well, if you're not in the program where you get accepted for, do law. And, you know, so I tell her, I said, no. I'm not going to take up the scholarship there. I'm not going to do law. She said, she, the woman was beside herself. So she said, where are you I said, I want to work in media. She said, but you know anybody in media? I said, no. She said, which media was you want to work from? I said, I don't know yet. She said, all right, when you, when you have the answer, come back to me. So I'm going to go on the same day, and I wrote a list of the media houses, Observer, Gleena, JR, this, that, 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 and I wrote nationwide on the paper. So you're going to make it now. I look at it and I say, but JR, the same people them who I was listening to on the radio when I was in primary school, I see them people them on the radio now, I'm a big man, I finished university now. So I had it in my head that they're the most youths. You understand? And then I didn't want to work in print, so the newspaper, they were out of the question. So I said, where? So I said, nationwide, it was growing at the time. And then Prefuse thing, Prefuse reputation, did have grew them time as a, as a serious newsman until my mother gave me the opportunities. So I said, all right. So I went to her the next day and said, I want to work at nationwide. And she said, why? I'm a teller. She said, all right. I know somebody who knows Prefuse. So she linked the man, a man named Errol Lee. She linked Errol Lee. And early got called her and said, Yeah, man, the kid said he will meet with the young man. So she actually drove me. She used to drive a Nissan Bluebird. She drive me in our blue, go up on nationwide, Manning's of the Road, 27 Manning's of the Road, and family. And I met Refuse. And in the same impressed. And mm -hmm. then his administrator called me and they hired me as I was, a, I, was a, as a, I started as a producer, production assistant. We used to sit down in the newsroom and some man where they a long time and know the thing, print something on the printer and ask us for go feed. Yeah, go feed up there and say, yo, 
Och det är man jag ser man det pipa på inte lika excellent som jag ska. Det är nog som jag står. Jag såg att jag university när man kommer att gå med att på pipa från det. Anyway, men det var från still, because as I said, I don't know more media, so I'm going to myself and get the thing and thing, thing, thing. And then just build from this. From Nationwide, so I started as a production assistant, then I, did, I was a producer, then I was a sports reporter, then I was a news reporter. I have a thing behind me in my office. My first formal contract was signed a Nationwide in 2006 as crime reporter. And the salary then, was eight hundred thousand dollars per annum. Now I framed it because at the time they have a bad day, but just look at where me I come from because them days they gone long, long. Eight hundred thousand a year can wash the car. You understand? So I mess up. They think I come from. You understand? So I, in, in nationwide, my journey, as I said, from production assistant, producer, sports reporter, crime reporter, and a newsroom. Then I left sport, left nationwide in 2008, March 3, 2008. I started at NEPA, National Environment and Planning Agency. I worked in the public education and corporate communications branch. I was in charge of PR, public relations for the whole agency. And then I left in 2010 and came back to nationwide. I came back as a senior reporter and I moved from senior reporter to deputy news editor. So by the time I left Nationwide in 2016 to go to Sports Max, I was the manager of news and current affairs, and I was the lead presenter for the morning um, current affairs, politics, economics discussion program. So I leave now, I go to Sports Max as executive producer in charge of the Sports Max zone. I go there, I do um, current affairs interviews on Steam TV. I invented my own program called Conversations, and... Uh, yeah, and now I'm back at Nation where I'm the deputy executive editor. So, yeah, deputy CEO. So, bro, I tell you, say, Bridget, and I know the people them laugh off of me because I want me know. You know, say, uh, since you have moved to Nationwide, Mika, and I really know Nationwide. No problem. <laughs> and and Nationwide is a your team. <laughs> in, in that time, the president, them time they, they um the the president Mike Ricketts and, and the Dalton in Saga and somebody mm -hmm. oh the thing they click the pan nationwide and I may say yo when him nationwide and I must say yeah man I suck on me you know fully about nationwide I suck on me becomes a fan because you go over nationwide you understand yeah, I'm a fan from sports mark them time them time they leave Rima I mean, I really have TV, J and them thing. That sports box me watch the zone and all of them things. So yeah, I am from them time there. And also I am a fan of um the one who produced the 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 the, the um GPS that are Wayne Worker. Wayne, yeah man, are we in work here now, as you know. Yeah, we in work are, 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 are nationwide. So she person was my favorite when it come on to sports and all of them things there. Me never miss a football. Yeah, but Never, never miss a once we walk a day there. Me never miss a football GP. Same thing there with the zoo and, the, and all of them things there. Oral Chase always love and respect him, sure, but as we say about that one day. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but still have respect for him, still. But me not really yeah, kind of, yeah. But me never know, say nationwide. And me and people are talking about, I know Cliff Lowe, but I never know, say, upon that program, them, but I always know about Cliff Lowe. I know about him. From Vibes yeah, Card, you go there every minute, I complain, I say, yo. You must say, why you come to me, Vibes, man? Say, yo, your program big, me. Uh, you may have to come to, because nobody not edit the thing and all of them things. So, me never know, say, nationwide, all of that, me I listen to. Yeah, man. So, so is, is it nationwide, my lad? Nationwide coming out of our university itself. As we tell people, say, I never had to go to journalism school to learn journalism because we learn it at Nationwide. And the thing is this, is because Nationwide is small, mm. it, it, it is not a coming up you know, get lost in the system. And there are many media houses, right, who don't give youth a chance. Cliff, you say, from you're good enough, you're old enough. When we touch the ear, you know, I read the first sports cast in number three. Any other station, but did I want to get a chance there? By the time he started post my first program on Nationwide, my dream, me get the chances because we show the ability and the man's emerging age is not an issue. You good? Boston, come, me and my work. Me and him used to host Nationwide at 5, which is the flagship 
current affairs discussion in Jamaica, you talk about politics, you talk about economics, you talk about finance, you talk about social issues, you talk about legislation, you talk about justice, you talk about all that things. So you, the funny thing is this, you know, you know what's funny? You, Ryan, right, know me for sports. And you say, and you say, boy, you respect my work in a sports. Mm. There are people who are never here with the sports yet. They must say, George, George, no, 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 politics and economics and governance and justice and legislation and this, that, 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 there are people with it because they've never heard me on the sports match before. <laughs> yes, but today, <laughs> today, me know a whole heap about you know. Cause when me this one go up on my computer and type it in on YouTube and I look, and I see how much politics. I mean, I say, wait there. Where George are the writer, so? I want to click on it, I see how Dennis Strong attack. I mean, I say, wait there. Many things are sports alone, do. Basketball, track and field. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a question. How are you know, say, you remember, well, the last election we had, last general election, September 3, 2020. Yeah. There was a, there, there, before, just before the election, there was the leadership debates, right? Mm -hmm. So the leaders of the country, PMP, Labour, right, man, them come head to head at the debate. The last leadership debate, head to head between Andrew Wallace and Peter Phillips. They built a CPTC, live audience and thing. There were two questioners, two journalists questioning them. One was Dean Jackson Miller, and the other one was me. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. And, uh, and look at me know about Dean Jackson. Uh, uh, just the other day, me I play a show with the regular girl saga with the go for me. I so called me really mm -hmm. kind of know about Dean Jackson. She's a liar and think I uh, question. Yeah. Some very, very tricky question, man. She leading yeah. on a bit all. Where it's just unbelievable. Yeah, man. But you see, just, so just like, oh, you know, you're a sportsman, so you're ahead in a sports. I tell you, so you have enough people that made in a news. And you have enough people. If you tell a man, so, yo, you know, so George, you know, football, you laugh at the scan. I say, nah, man. The man is no more news, man, and Ray Ray. The man is no more sports. They can't ask the man is no more sports. And they have a look for him weird, like, brother, where you there? And they must say, where you there? The man is a news, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro. But you know, you know, so the reason why me respect, respect, um, you're a journalist, brother. Cause me, when me, when me get nobody for interview, whether it be the Jeff, brother, me, uh, this is one of the reasons why me come in at this, brother. Because I always get some of soft question and thing, and me never really kind of like that. So, you know, so I watch upon, um, sports, man, I see a back up Dennis Chung before you leave upon sports, man. I say, yes, man. I saw me like journalism, brother. And at the same thing, reason why I did love, um, we know because the man Craig Butler go at it and whole heap of people because of him good journalism. At them type of journalism, you see my people, they want me read. I mean, they read yeah. still, but I can't, yeah, yeah, me need to hear me refer to oral because I disappear yeah. oral. You get the I say because yeah. she personally and my go to journalist when it come on to tough question and now ease up on people and. By the way, me even go check out Dean Jackson. I kind of get for love her too because yeah. my life is supposed do journalism, Bridget. Yeah, man. Yeah. Real, man. Tell the real deal, man. Tell the real deal. Yeah. So, so, you didn't play any Premier League? You didn't play any Premier League? No, no, no. Me not so good. No, no, no. Me not so good, brother. Me not so good. <laughs> me not so good. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This morning, me watch, um, I was watching an interview with um, Shokri Moss, the selector. You know him? Yeah, um, yeah. So may I tell, may I, tell I, I saw him, I saw him, I was somewhere the other day and, I, and his, 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 his picture came up on the TV. So I was telling someone, I said, yo, you know him? And I said, yeah, man, Shokri was a selector. I said, that's all you know about him. And I said, yeah, I said, yo, that man is our, our, our wickedest dribbler in the Premier League ever. So they said, he can't play well. I said, he can't see him. I said, the man is sick. And we used to call him Puppy Dog. Puppy Dog. Puppy Dog. Puppy Dog. Puppy Dog. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, and even that, yeah, yeah, from the schoolboy football, the Champions League, the NBA, Virgin, may I tell you, say, yo, brother, come and follow you everywhere, you know, brother. Yeah, it? And if we, brother, it was a drive, you know, so when you did message me, I say, you know, them man, I watch my program, and them man, use a man, I look up to brother. You yeah, get man. Yeah, so you doing the, all of these great things, brother, it was just a, a joy, just. Listening and watching your journey and all of them stuff they're bridging. But why you keep on leave nationwide and 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 and, and move? Why why always a move move move? 
<laughs> well, you know, the first time, the first time in you know, 2008, I wanted a different challenge. Listen, it's going to happen to you too, you know. You see, you and your show, now you establish your show, and, 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 and people know you as Ryan LST, Liverpool man, who, even though, who will love more, you know, even though in Liverpool, like your style, you know, if foolish is a go on again, you know, you know, I back here, foolish is in here, I say, yo, there's a foolishness. You understand? That's why I love it. And, and for the record, for the record, and if somebody tell them about you, you know, and if somebody send me a clip of you, you know, you come up on my feed and I start watching things, and I say, yo, you get it easy, you know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, organic. It's like somebody tell me. I mean, yeah. log on everything for myself, and then we make a link, and we, we talk, and banter, and we respect the thing. So what may I say is this. You'll come, you'll come, and take, you'll come to a point, Ryan, where you want a different challenge. No matter like me, remember, you know, the days of working one place and doing one thing, that's what your grandparents, my parents, tell my you. grandparents, they want to do. You, you want to find one piece of work to you know, for 40 years, and you retire and get a pension, and go no, sir. You would want to do different things and try different things. So the first time I left, I think it was a very good move because I went into a field that I had never worked in before. Government were different. It's like when you're going to walk in a private sector company, you know, if you want to fire a man, you say, yo, you're fired. And in Ghana, you can't let the government say, you could have a man to walk in the office and stab a man in the air with an ice stick. You can't just fire him just so. So a different thing. And the way the people are the culture, different. And it gives you an insight into how taxpayers' money is spent. So that was a very good thing. So it was a, it was a need for a different experience which, which led me away. When I come back, to tell you the truth, when I left in 2016, yeah, Sportsmax was asking me for a long time, say, yo, come in and the thing, come in and the thing, come in and the thing, come in and the thing. And I said, fine, and I said, yes. And I said, yes, look how many times the politics were you know, and, the, and the news and the murder and the crime and this and that and every day, Andrew, and Porsche, Porsche was the, the PMP president at the time. And this and that, and the same thing, they were the news, every time that time they really want to change. And I had never done TV full time before. I had done TV before because I had done commentary on TV games for Sports Max. I had done tournaments for Sports Max. I had done every tournament as you know, the World Cup, with the Olympics, with the World Championships, with the hey. World Cup cricket, with the netball World Cup, with every NBA, with the everything, with the NBA All Star, with the which all star weekend ago? Oh, five? Me interview LeBron. I don't think that. I was just in a place where at the time but they want a new challenge and want to test myself in one different way. So that's why I left and went to Sportsmax in 2016. But leave from yeah. Sportsmax now was the same thing, right? I wanted a different challenge. We did kind of do the same thing every day. We could have done the zone, wake up three o'clock, spin around now, circle, hang upside down, and do the show good the same way. That was not a challenge. I wanted something to test me. So there was a task and a job here that required me you know, to work at a different level. You know? I mean, as we said, I'm the second in command of the company. Me have a whole heap of things under my finger, a whole heap of talent for nurture, a whole heap of programs put in good order. You know, fix still the people in the new same way. So that challenge, the things that know are the right time to take on the challenge. Yeah. I know for a fact that I'm a nation I'm where people know I hear this, I'm sure. So it will come to a point where they never want a different challenge again. That was mm -hmm. so like, yeah. Oh, fair enough. You know, so my, my interview craft right the other day, and a couple of people will reach out to me and say, Oh, I leave from football and me interview a politician. So they might ask me, Oh, I do it. And me leave it, me, me myself, I know, Oh, I do it. You understand? Oh, what advice would you give to me? And think, I don't want to branch off and I love football right now. So, mm -hmm. it, so, Damien Crawford, a lot of people were surprised me interview him. And they might say, Yo, oh, you address and all of them things with a question and all of them. Things. And I say, Basically, it's just the conversation. One time you just write down me, 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 uh, me question them. Me no longer write down my question. Me feed off of the person. Um, because I like the interview come natural. When me write down and thing, it wasn't like, I keep on a fair, go back to the paper and paper. I mean, never really like it. Sometimes I want it, I want it for flow natural. You understand? And then I pick up from pieces. Just like how you move from the race house. We're talking about race house in the early part. And then you go back to your, That's how me like it. I don't like when it kind of box and thing. What advice would you give to a youngster who want to get into journalism, sports, any little thing? You know, good question, Natalie, because guess what? I have spent a lot of time, Ryan, 
watching and listening to a lot of people. You know, Thierry Henry did say something one time, right? which was very instructive to me. He was still at Arsenal at the time. So they were asking him, so boy, you know, do you watch other players? How, how do you improve the game? And Thierry Henry said, of course you can watch other players. They have some football that said them to watch themselves, them to watch nobody. You have to watch other people they learn. And there was a striker at Manchester City at the time, when City never good, named Paul Dicker. That man could run around, run up and down for the whole day. He was at a new stance to defenders, but that man couldn't score to see him like the man scored record poor, but he was a hard working. The man would run for 100 minutes, run hard. I was a tough. You remember, you remember how Tevez was at Manchester City, at Manchester United? So yeah. not the defenders that, that was him, but he couldn't finish. So he was one of the worst strikers in the Premier League, then, if you can say something like that. Mm. And Thierry Henry said, yo, even that man I watch and learn from, because what that man teach me is work rate. So I say that to say to you, say, in our business, people have to look and learn. You say you look on Tracy. I'm sure that there are aspects of Tracy thing where you say, all right, then, we can't work that thing in my own. You look at Wayne, you can't say, all right, then, but like how Wayne do that thing then, they will just adapt it in my way. You look on George, you say, all right, then, but like how George, you, say, you, you bring that thing. Like, even if you don't see that to yourself, Consciously, the fact that you watch these people automatically, given the business that you are in, you are going to pull from them something that you believe can make your game better. So I, I watch a whole lot of people, watch a late night talk show, watch stand up comedian because one of the things we learn from a stand up comedian is tiny. Most people don't do good interviews, Ryan, because they don't time their questions perfect. You know, time and intervention well. So, man, we are talk, 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 you know. I know if you interrupt, you know, you know, you know. But you will feel, say, he might talk to you if you interrupt, and you know, interrupt at the time when the viewer to say, yo, let him talk, let him talk, let him talk, you understand? Really? You all learn that, you learn that when you watch, like, stand-up comedians because they're on the time. Because you don't say the best joke. If you tell the best joke out of time, the man not going laugh. But if you get the timing right, boom. So you have to watch various people, or watch various things, and feed your own body of experience. And then it will come natural. And what it is that you have, you have transitioned into, based on what you are saying, you don't use the notes anymore. What has happened to Ryan is that Ryan has now become a good conversationalist. So you can move from, you can move from football, you talk to a politician. That's easy. Because in, in, in real terms, it wasn't like you interviewed a politician. It's just like you are reasoning with a man who happens to be a politician. So mm -hmm. you were having a conversation with him. And it is more than an interview. The best interviews are the ones where you're having a conversation with the, with, with the person. It's just like, say, you, 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 you fly them to Jamaica, you know, or you go to Portmore, or you go to Kingston, or you go wherever. You go to you chat to your friend, or somebody come out there, you have a say, yo. So and so and so and so and so and then we realized somebody was filming it. And I said, no, oh, this is it. Yeah, conversation. So the advice is <clears throat> you have to watch a lot of things, watch a lot of people, and as you watch and listen, you will take on aspects of that of those things that you have looked at, that you have listened to, that you have watched, and then your own game will become great because that's what I did. And that's what you are doing. Yeah, bro, it's amazing. It's just amazing where how far I'm coming from with this thing, brother. And if you know, say, I have to look on the blackboard because normally I have to look a piece of blackboard and look on. I have to look yeah, on. Man. It come natural. I just take up my phone. I just read the article. I'm going to need to look at the article to see what I say and all of them things. It's just amazing how far I grew. And in you know this, boy, I never know whether I get this, brother. Honest. Mm -hmm. never, you understand? Sometimes. How do you know? Because me know when I interview I go sweet, you know. I can know in the like the first three to four minutes in the interview. How do you know when I interview, you know, see how the interview will come out good, you know? Well, well, I tell you what, I tell you what. <coughs> how I look at it, I know what I want to get out of the interview. And yeah. the challenge for me is in the first three, four minutes when the guests are behaving like they don't want you. Yeah, you yeah. know to get out of the interview. And then you say, hey, you would think, say, I'm going to waste my time. I'm prepared for this. And you're coming in and I'll give them one. So that, that, that now is a challenge. So 
I, 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 when the case is given from the start, you know, say, all right, that interview, you're going to run smooth, they can't ask any question, get the answer. But as you know very well, sometimes people them come on and then, you them, know them. what I mean? So yeah, I try to make them relax. And, 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 that's and this helps. Yeah. Well, uh, this, this helps, this helps you, you Ryan. And, and this is where you just spoke up for yourself. I'm very happy that you are there. It's when a man, with a person, man or woman, come to you for interview, and if they really want to talk, you know, but them say, I want to interview you, and they don't want to draw them out. You see, when you are looking at them, I make maintain eye contact, and them certain, say, are you and them alone in this space? You know, this track, you know, you look on the notes. That is when you get the best out of your guests. Your guests will not respect you if they see every minute I look on paper, I look on paper, I look on paper and I ask them. No work. No work. Yeah. Bridging, may I tell it, may I tell it, may I tell it, say, oh, my, it's the Pamada school, Pamada Excelsior. I was the leader, I was the captain. Me know mm -hmm. the thing is not for me. I'm always a fight with all of my players, them. Fight with them, brother. Trust me, every time them see me, I say, boy, the message me, I say, bro, you make me there, uh, uh, this big job, you know. The fight, me see them under the prom tree, my fight. I always tell them, say, yo, brother, me, I go make it out, you know. But I have to make it out. You understand? Because my thing, book wasn't my thing. You understand? But it's a sports, it's a, we just don't do an end of year text, a, a, a exam. And all of the man, him, sit down, stand up in the school under the plumber, debate about or oh, challenge the exam. Me come now with me have a view and me Liverpool and me I say, yo, you know, see that much in the man, I say, yo, brother, we just don't do an exam. Is that real, my man? Me I say, brother, I don't do nothing, I don't pass, brother, football, I want to talk about. So, me all, me never know, say, brother, do this, you know. But mm. me, I love the sports debate when it come on to the Jamaican Premier League, when it come on to Liverpool, a mighty mm. budget. And for no say when me just start out, cause me a virgin way push me now one group. I say, yo brother, every day you you talk this great things a club now. Nah, this club, why you not make a YouTube channel and thing? Mm -hmm. So my main mm -hmm. YouTube channel, I'm normally upload where Raikin and all of them man. They say, man, I'm I may have beg the man them to support it, and the man them say, we not support that. You always like you know everything all about football. We want to see it on camera. The moment we go on camera, I'm kind of a little bit nervous still and think until more me do it and all of them. You ever feel, me ask, you ever feel like going into an interview or go, making a show? You're nervous? All right, Regin, very good question you're asking, man. Let me tell you this. People always see you know and think uh, this, was way, this was the way you always were. Virgin, we go through some blur meeting with nerves. Yo, this is the first time but somebody just start reading sports on radio. I you know say I make some mistake in a man. And then Ed Barnes was my was my um was our editor. So the only man who mentor me, mentor me in a sports. Confusing the news. So so me get the benefit of two legends. I do I, I show me how to do with sports and how to do with the news. And the man, the, the man, the man, the the criticism of the man, the man, they make you feel like, say, when you make a mistake, Ed Mars make you feel like, say, are the worst mistake making in the history of mankind. No matter how you think it's mad, and the man, they make you feel, no, brother. So you grow up, he hate mistake. Anyway, yeah, man, what if a time nerves, man? Remember when we had an interview with Omar Davis, Dr. Omar Davis was the finance minister. And then I look at you, just start the nation while at five, the premier. Politics and current affairs discussion I'm showing in Jamaica. It's not that Cliff Hughes. Cliff Hughes is an Emmy Award winning journalist in my youth. And he was a little you just a coming out, he's long side. I mean, yeah, I'm back up over this for the line, you know. And the man that is, he doesn't know where I talk about, the man who is shield up on the radio in my land. So you're nervous to look at your prepare your question, then I answer, bro, all right. Suppose we ask a question and him fan me off or make it look like he doesn't know me at all. What me I going to do? And you know what I mean? Suppose he start raising advice and start. Go on, like some boy, I mean, you know me, I talk about and embarrass upon the radio and what if I nerves, man? But <clears throat> with experience and when, <clears throat> when you go and people get interviewed by you and they give you good feedback and then when you do interviews and you know, say, boy, you never did your best job there, where you keep on 
researching, keep on preparing well, that is when you start with a degree of comfort. No, I could never be nervous interviewing anybody because look, most journalists in Jamaica, the biggest interview they've ever got from the Prime Minister, Andrew Wallace, and they interview Portia, they interview Dr. Nigel Clark, the Finance Minister. They interview LeBron James. So how is it that somebody in a Jamaica can make me nervous to interview them? Me and Bull sit down one day for about eight hours. I make one, 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 one thing last December. One, last December, did you send a thing about baby Olympics for Christmas? A nice thing, thing shot, man. Me and Bull do it in our studio um, for the complex to see if everything. So me and the legend in our place, eight hours, I do the thing, I do the thing, I do the lines, I do the thing, I do the thing, thing. I mean, so me and the president are like them and they are working for eight hours. Me interview LeBron three times. Me interview Steph Curry, James Harden, Mary of Shoulders with Ronaldinho, with we got White House, Obama. I mean, why would I? So, so what I'm trying to show you is that my experiences have eliminated nerves now. So I can't nervous again. When there was a time, when the nerves, that, that was real, brother. That was real. <laughs> <laughs> Reading the news, TV, or radio. Which one of them you get more comfortable quick? The TV, or which one of them more difficult? The TV, or the radio? Can you have a look meeting the TV? You know, can you have a look on the no, TV? There's no doubt. There's no doubt. You have, you, 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 you have to keep your body posture, right? They can't slump and see. If you notice me, you know me, I do this with you. I try to fix myself, make sure my posture, right? So TV is infinitely harder than radio. But let me tell you what. If you ask me which one better, radio or TV, let me tell you radio any day. Right, there's a thing in my G. Let me tell you something. You have some people on TV, but I'm say no. You have some people on TV that are teleprompter readers. Meaning, mm -hmm. you hear them at about a topic, a teleprompter they read. So somebody is writing a script and they read off of the script. Mm -hmm. In a radio, you know, use no script. You have to just talk, you have to, 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 you you have to, you you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have you have to, you have you yeah. So in other situations, you know, and you suddenly have an hour to go extra before the match. You never plan for that hour, you know, and the mm. things that you would have, the notes where you'd have prepared, the notes them done because you use them in the pregame show already. You're mm. going in trouble. You're going in trouble as a TV broadcaster you know, because, you know, you used to be able to talk off the top of your head on the fly. The radio person now, the person who's learning a radio, so the journalists that are training a radio are better than the one that was just coming at TV. Because the TV ones are spoon fed. People give you a script. People write things, put it on the front of you. Producer are talking in your ears. When you're a radio journalist, my lad, you have to come up with that shit yourself. Mm. And how I learned that, Bridget, during hurricane coverage, you get up on the radio, man, and Cliff used up on the radio from 6 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the night, whole day. A task about what going out the road, this, that, that. A random politics, this random facts, this, that, 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 that. You have, to, can, you have to be able to think on your feet and articulate. That's the radio person's gift. That's why I love radio far more than TV. But TV is very more difficult because people are looking at you and they like them and they like them. They're not, they like them. not cool and they like them hot, you know. And you have on the makeup and thing, thing, thing. And you have on the, the ISB, a producer talking their ears, director talking their ears. This, that, 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 that. When we are commenting games, you know, when we are commenting football, and Ryan, when we are director, you know, the director in our ears, you know, if we have 11 cameramen, you know, we are here, the director talk to 11 cameramen while we are commenting play by play, you know, and then when the producer come in, Antipolis and talk to you, you have to be able to isolate the producer's voice, different from the director talk to the cameraman, you want to cost them sometimes and hear when the producer talk to you directly for you with something specific. So, it's very, very challenging broadcasting hard, but we love radio more. Mm. But one of the things when me me think me, me believe the radio is more difficult for a long time. You see, um I play schoolboy football and radio. 
just for this, just you not see it, you know, but just you listening it and the commentator describe what is going on. Yo, Bridging, that is not an easy thing, you know, and for the person to enjoy it and listen it, you know, pan the radio, you know. That is true. That is why uh, people criticize local commentators because somebody tell them why we don't make the game as exciting as England. Come on, we are playing for some field where the ball boom. Not even bounce the ball, boom. A boom ball and a ball and a bounce. You can't anticipate the whole ball and a boom. You feel them bad, the atmosphere bad, they are work under some very tough circumstances. So it's difficult to compare that to Peter Jewish, you know, an air conditioned box. I watch Liverpool and Chelsea for one team for one field of school like one pool team. With yeah. the best footballers in the world a play at breakneck speed. You can't compare to that. But the point you make about the descriptive nature of radio commentary is very, very true, my friend. Yeah. We, 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 when you have to tell a, a listener, wah, wah, rather than never skeet, and you, you can't you can describe it to a certain extent when you're a TV commentator because people will say, oh, why are you doing that? Because are seeing the goal. Yeah. So why are you telling them this, that, that? But when I really know, you personally come out and you do more descriptive commentary. So you are absolutely right about that aspect. Fair enough. You know what say The viewers, um, big up to all of the people in the comment section. People, hit the like button and subscribe. The people that always say, why every time I interview people, I always say this, because I always tell him, say, I want to make sure the guests, because you have some particular person where you interview and they want your attention. So you nod in your head, keep on nodding your head. You, that, you letting them know that, hey, I'm listening to you and I am well focused. A lot of yeah. people say, oh, I ever did this, I like can't madman. But I tell you <laughs> about, um, what I mean, focus and to let the viewers, uh, the person who may have, Interview know that I am listening to them. They always mm -hmm. cute me and me it. So I never say, Well, you're not the head. But more yeah, ask that. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're right. You yeah, engaged them, you know? Yeah, man. Where is it now? More ask that question. Yeah. More for ask that question yeah, from a long time, you know. Where you see Jamaica, based upon you covering um sports in Jamaica, where do you see our administration? Going with our football right now. Oh boy. The, the next election, and I will know who the, 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 the combatants are, is going to be very important because I tell you what, the, our administrations have let themselves be sucked into a vortex of negativity by virtue of how them work. Let me give you an example. Every time the women's football team come up and it's to travel, the same issues, ticket issues, accommodation issues, training camp issues, things that you'd think that an administration ought to be able to manage, which is why you have a president and a secretariat and general secretary and team and everything. So when that happens now, then the public... <coughs> Only have bad things to say about the administration. So the girl that go play and perform in a, this vortex, this hole of negativity, and this negativity attaches itself to the federation. Now when the reggae boys come now, I mean, Roger, it's what the man them do that the work of qualifying or we start the campaign. The brand new team, you can tear the with more a squad yeah, of about 23 bar. With 18 of them are stranger. As we said to somebody say, well, on, when you criticize what happened at that point in the World Cup campaign, right? For the bad performances, you're not being fair because name which other team, which other team in our country can assemble a squad of players where the man them in the squad have never played a game with each other before. Jamaica is the only one to do that. Is that a coach's problem? No, because the coach works with the players. He's given by the federation. It's not like the man that announced the World Cup late overnight and caught we and, and we were caught unawares. Everybody knows the program of World Cup qualifying. So it was it, it, it's a situation where the federation goes out and get the players. At a certain point, it 
Kossa, så hur det indikerar sig när man får komma. I den mesta så ser jag komma last minute. Så i den tiden är Lionel Messi. Jag kom till Jamaica last minute. Kom till Rio de Janeiro, you know, no. It's going to be a problem to adjust and to build the C word, which the boys are the top most chemistry. So I still have to say, my friend, the administration of the football has been poor. The decision making has been poor. The planning has been poor. Yes, there have been issues that have affected the federation's smooth working, but those issues by themselves have not, are not strong enough to have caused the shambles that we have seen with the reggae boys field World Cup champion, the issues around the girls traveling to New Zealand and Australia for this World Cup, and the fact is we now get better until we have strong administration, we can have a team in place, we're booking tickets that will be straightforward. Assembling players that will be straightforward. And when they come on and run out in the USL, and we shift two man and score and goal from 30 yards, and I'm going to just bring him into the setup and make him into another stranger again with the, within the team. Once you have a federation that can get it administratively right, then the rest of it, my friend, will take care of itself. But as long as you have a federation getting in the way of the players, not managing well, and then when people hear the kind of criticism you know, them things they are like, you know, like, no, why can't we get it's a nice man? He's <laughs> a, a, a nice guy. There's no, no there's nobody who can tell me that Michael Rickett is an evil man who bad mind like, No, he's a nice man. But has Michael Rickett administrated well? The record suggests no. No. Does he deserve another term in office? That's a different question that for deficits who have to answer. Does Raymond Anderson in his capacity? with the things that have gone wrong on his watch as vice president that he was responsible for that didn't go according to plan and that caused the JFF to get additional criticism. How does that put him in position to be the man in charge? All of those questions have to be answered. As I said, with bad administration comes bad vibes, a public that is not in tune with the players, a public who feel like, say, you know, so I pick up a squad of man. So I'm like, man, come on, Leon, come on, Leon. Now I play good because Leon and the team that's functioning well, they don't know how to use him. Nicky and Antonio up front look like a, look like a, a, a man who used to pull off the door with a quad or out of asylum or one of night to look like a bouncer. How, how, how to incorporate him in the squad? Where is the planning to bring a set number of players and keep them together rather than a bring strange at the old, old revolving door? If the administration is not right, the football will not be right. Yeah. Um, you know, someone asked a question. We make for ask a question, but you, you ever do an interview yet? And the person we are interview, them just start. They no longer want to listen to what I say. Them just want to disrupt you. Just disrupt you to chew you off your game. Yeah, man. I, I, it used to happen a lot. It not happen somewhere because it's when they build a reputation, people are trying to do. Listen, here's how you deal with that. You must always, what you do, you know, that's just a real you slow down, you stop that. Mm -hmm. You make them go on, they interview and say, listen, you are my guest. As my guest, I will treat you with respect. I will not treat you with deference because I'm not deferential to any man, but you will get respect. As my guest, you conform to the way that I want to run the program because I am in charge of the program. Mm -hmm. You see, after that, Ryan, the guest has two options. They either hang up and cut out the thing, which is not a problem, or they will settle down and confirm. But you have to show, my friend, that you are in charge. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, for you know, you have some high-flung lawyers who come on, you know. You understand, because I'm a big liar, and they say, well, a journalist, and they don't know nothing more about sports. Sports journalists, and they don't know more about sports. They come and they try to take over your program from you. You know me very well, you know, so I'm going to play that. You understand? So you have to always establish, my friend, that you are the man in charge. And so as my guest, you have, a, you have a conduct yourself the way that is best to make the program run smooth. Otherwise, you can have a good day. You can come off of the program. No problem. Me cut you off if you don't want to come off. Simple. But, so, let me tell you, say, are you, I learned that from. I mean, yeah, I tell you, something what happened to me on the show when me I interviewed the president and my cricket, um, um, Dennis Strong and all of them things. Yeah. And me, it's the reason why I remember back because we are working the flow of the interview. It's when they bring up 
the president, I remember when I do an interview with him and you ask him, he must say, yo, we just qualified for the World Cup. And this is how we, like, he might tell us, say, yo, this is what we're supposed to attack. But he said, no, my crickets. This just happened where the bag them stuck. This is more bigger than the football going forward. These are issues we have to pan out. And he said to him, say, Virgin, you see, if you're going to talk over me, it not going to work. We are trying to make the view of them to get the And Are you going to learn that from you know? And guess what? You know what them do me? I tell you, you know what them do me? Because them know say I love the DBA thing. Them disrupt me. Then it's strong. Normally, then it's strong with a man who very respectfully. He not going to make a talk over him. Him say you talk. But Miss Fine is strange for you know, so when I ask him them big question and now. And thing. Him start to get on top of him voice. And I say, no, I just relax. And I say, go on talk. Go on talk. Because we're not gonna know where we are and this, you know. And this is how my, my, my learn. I may tell you, say, are you me learn that from don't talk to okay. each other, allow yeah. them to talk, and are you me learn that from? And then it's strong, and them can't try it with me again because yeah. you know when them can't, when you beat them the right and proper way, not with the leather belt, but you beat them, them get loud and they want to mess up the interview for two and a half. But me learn as me go along. So, Bridget, may I thank you for that little piece there because <laughs> tell us, brother. That moment and sports match with you and the president, me I say, okay, all right, Ryan, don't worry. Me say, yo, me I go and drink my soup. No man, you yeah. talk. Yeah. You, me allow you. And you see, the moment me start do that, my box him in the corner. Me I tell him I ban them, you know. Me give them a six yeah. months, all of them from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> six months back there. because we the had the man football. You, you know, you know, years ago, you know, years ago. I had a similar exchange on radio with the no prime minister. And I had to tell him the same thing. Say, you know, listen, you will get respect, you know, because respect is due. And as my guest, I'll take care of you and treat you good because you're my guest. But I am in charge of the program. So you can make up your mind if you want to conduct yourself in a manner that allows us to discuss things of national importance. Bridging, trust me, bro. The biggest lesson that can't forget that day, the brother. And that was like a roughly eight months ago, uh, a year ago, Bridging. I may tell you, say, one of the biggest lessons. That's why I may tell you, say, follow you. When you leave Sports Park, my Bex, brother. Trust me, bro. <laughs> Bex, brother. You may look forward for see, brother. Because I may tell you, say, I them cheap for them to really look and learn and yeah, man. them stuff. There. You get me? So, yeah, that was. Very interested for hear your point, point on that because you know, even my big friend Butler like usual do me that and thing. And me say that <laughs> you understand, Butler like very clever with him thing. Thing, yo, you have some people when you interview them, you have to make sure say they play your A game. And one of the things them with them always do to my brother, where I learn, me learn. And I want to big up my teacher, me have another teacher where behind the scene help me as mm -hmm. find out them people because I'm a slow learner, you know. But they allow me to continue to learn and learn with the big wall in front of me, but I can't see behind it. You understand? Yeah, so, I am telling you this, Virgin. I have learned so much by doing interview and them chicks and them cards and all of them things. They're very smart when they do them interview. And the first thing what they do, for my job, my guard, is to compliment me. Always. So, I say to them, say, yo. No man, me know me I do a good job. Let's get to the point. Yes, I'm man. Very well. them, them, them do that too. When them compliment you, I make it kind of a little bit drop a girl that probably too me young. Me just a learn about them. Well, you are, you are. Is it was it too me me learn me sitting beside Cliff? So him always him him tell me that from early. So listen, no make them come and mutter you. You don't come and 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 the subject matter you come out. You don't come out for compliment. So compliment is either here or there. And 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 the subject matter you come out. You understand? So we don't hear that, brother. We don't hear, oh, George, listen to me. We don't hear that. Go on, talk about the issue. You understand? Go on, talk about it. Bridget, I tell you, see, I, I learn a lot of things, brother. And, and thing, and one of the things I learn to Bridget, you see, when I just start, when I normally break news, I kind of break news, different things. I realize that the viewers, them, some of them, they don't comprehend and they don't understand. You understand? And them always do me a thing when I break a news, them depend on another show. I call up my name and say, I said this and I said that. 
and uh-huh. learn how to break. You know, so as you go along, you learn and all of them things there, Bridget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, Bridget. But talk to me now with the regular girls. The regular girls, because you know, not have much time. You see me, I say, Bridget. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Girls, um, great campaign and thing, but still, JFF can't themselves all when the team are the good, Bridget. Well, you know, it, I, I was proud of the thing. I mean, I looked at it this way and I said, well, all right. Then. So we scored we scored one goal in the tournament. You realize? Yeah, yeah one goal. We scored, we scored one goal in the tournament. Um, but what that said to me was that Lauren Donaldson and the ladies themselves, they knew what their strengths were and then played to their strengths. Whenever I try to say, oh, we're going to go entertain the crowd and I get bang up, six long, five long, this, that, that. No, no, we knew what our strengths were. Mm. We played conservative, very organized. And then we tried to pinch a goal or two, and we only got one and everything else. But look, the JFF, the JFF has put itself in a position where the casual observer believes they are fidel at team. Mm. More you ask yourself which other federation in the world of football, FIFA, 200 and members. Tell me which other one find themselves in a position where one benefactor has legitimate claim to being the oxygen for the team rather than the federation that is mandated by FIFA to administrate football in the country. So, by virtue of their own act, the JFF put themselves in this position. Now, let me tell you this. Dennis Strong is a man that I have had a very good working relationship with. I mean, Dennis knows him numbers as a chartered accountant. Dennis is a very intelligent man. So there are certain things you expect from him from a general secretary's perspective where financial prudence is concerned, good decision making, and a, 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 a commitment to process and to let processes determine what the best decision to be made is. There are other aspects of the federation which my crickets inherit, where the federation wasn't being run as a business. And him come in, and because I'm a nice guy style, the federation not think as a business either. And when you run something as a business, you take care of all the important units in the business. In fact, you think of all the units in the business as important. The problem the JFF has, and it is manifest especially in the women's team, is because certain of the business units not being managed seriously, causing them to fall down flat and to be resuscitated by a rich and a connected benefactor, as Sudella is, God bless her. So the man, them arms on the outside are looking on the success that the girls have had, with the success really facilitated and fostered by one individual. The story doesn't have to remain that way. The JFF can start doing things right. And one of the biggest problems I have with Mike is that Mike believes that by getting a couple of the girls to like him, and I want to be clear when I say like him, like him as, a, as an administrator. Good, no, not, 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 not yeah. any funny business, right? Because Mike is a nice guy. Mike likes when people like him. Mike believes that if a couple of the girls are like, see a man, I'm like a president, nice man, decent man, blah, 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 that is it. That is not it. Okay. If it is that the girls are going to hate your guts, but believe that you're doing a good job and that you mean the federation well, that's the aim. So it is, the, it is, it is less energy into making individual players like you and can be able to call you on your phone at hours a night and you answer them. It is about managing things in a, from a perspective that everybody believes that there is leadership and the leadership is working and that the JFF is doing all it can to create the abiding framework for good football to happen. I, I'm sorry if I sound philosophical, but I have to sound philosophical because that's where the problem fixing starts, my friend. And that's what needs to happen. And the women, the JFF have done the women badly. They've done some good things. Uh, the government can't intervene because, as you very well know, the moment government intervened at a certain level, FIFA will suspend the JFF. So, and the government interference, so they can't do that. So, the JFF just needs to get its act together under somebody. Whether Ricketts gets a second term or Anderson comes in, it needs somebody to run the JFF like a business. And once, it's, once the top start thrive, then the rest of the body will also thrive. 
Yeah. Boy, no, no, tell them my crickets and NDC. I think all of them must go, brother. Trust me. <laughs> I see them have that business mindset, the Virgin. And me I tell you, one of the biggest disappointed me, I tell you, you know, brother, is my friend Cheekyard Man, you know. That are my biggest. I was so disappointed in Cheekyard. What, what, what Cheekyard Man? Dennis Strong Man. <laughs> so disappointed. Cause, you know, Jack, or anybody in you know, the JFF, because any, any, most of the things them were. Break out with the, with the administration. Normally, I get it first and me, me, me break it and all of them stuff. There. See, it's when Dennis Trump come in, I tell you the truth. Me, him say he's a man of dignity and, and thing. And I watch him and I say, yeah, that brother here come change. The perspective when him tell me, say, Yo, things are going to change and thing. Till the eve when I get all the, the news, you know, I go to the man and I say, Mr. Trump, you just come in and I try to help you, you know. Come on, you clean up things and I say, yo, brother, yo, only you no know, pay the girls them. I'm going to make a video right now about this, you know. And I say, boy, Ryan, we're going to try to pay them, you know. We're going to try to pay them, you know. Even when I get the news before, I'm going to do it, you know. I go to him and I talk to him and I say, yo, brother, this can't go on, you know. But I still have to do my show up on it, you know. And I beat you, you know. Me think so the man has to change, brother, but. I always talk about this virus in the administration. Once you go in, it catch you. <laughs> Once you go in, Lance, the virus catch you. You have a piece of virus in there. It no matter who go in there. And that's why I don't want a more new person go in there until you clean up. You understand? Mm. And so, mm. me, you know, we are not done, we are not knock up the piece of wall and spray the, the, the chemical in there to get out the, the virus in there and bring in a new person. May I tell you the truth, brother? Me not see our footballer get better. <sighs> well, guess what? Guess what? Um, I can be optimistic though, Ryan, because I think that with the Jamaica Premier League with JPL, we have a good thing. The first year at the JPL, don't forget, you know, that apart from horse racing, you know, yeah. football was the only thing that was going on during COVID, you know. And it managed well. I don't think we had any mass, um, well, we didn't have any mass um, infections and it, it, it went well. The second year of the JPL also went well. And I think the JPL has given a kind of structure to local football that it lacked for so many years. The PLC did a good job taking it along and the JPL is trying to take it way beyond where the PLC left it. So I think that where, where, where local football is concerned at the highest level, we have a good thing going. We need to we need to get the parish level leagues and the conflict competitions up to a higher standard. And that's where a lot of hard work is take, should take place now. Because guess what? The schoolboy level is very organized. A lot of money is in schoolboy football from Digistel and Flu and, and, and Sports Max and everybody else who's sponsoring in it. And there's a, 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 a quality gap in administration and organization between the schoolboy football competition and the JPL. The things that are in the middle of those two competitions are not best known. Kasafa has had its own problems. Uh, Kasafa has a strong name and uh, Kasafa have affiliates that are um, that have been around doing football for a long time and know what proper administration is. They need more technical support to make Kasafa even stronger. So I'm saying that I'm optimistic when I look at local football, even though that there's even though there are so many things that ought to be improved. But if I use the JPL as an example and schoolboy football as an example, schoolboy football has never been as organized as this. The mm. top flight local competition has never been as organized as this. May, may optimistic, but 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 the JFS need to do a lot, 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 lot more. Would I agree with it? But and even with that brother, I'm gonna talk to Chris Williams, I'm gonna talk to um what's his name again? Okay, oh, I mean Owen Hill. Bridge the man them are done. If me Jamaican Premier League, I love it, brother. You get the man say, and to see where it's there at this you now with fight, I know say more money going to come in. The other day, I talked to Chris. I said, Chris, where I go right now? JPL done and thing, man. So, I cut out me, I go right now. No, 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 look some money for big, you know, for try to improve this, you know. And mm -hmm. the, the, the people and the team where I have around him, I tell you, say, it's just amazing the job what they do. I mm -hmm. watch the Jamaican Premier League and it just look good. Every year yeah. it has been better and better and more players come out. But them doing that fantastic job, 
but at the same time, they fight Chris Williams. <laughs> Not the leader, you know, the leadership is poor, brother. Because the JPL, you know, it could have led to the next level if the JPL yeah. did the right thing. May I, may I tell you this, you know, brother? Mm. We die, brother. We die. We just pray for the girls and make a look around and the boys and make a look around. Nothing consistent. Mm -hmm. You're consistent, brother. And me, you talk about this for years, brother. And even the same interview where you do with, with Sidella Mali, I said, yeah, we, we, when Dalton win the all of them things are talking about 10, 15 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah, you talk about now. And me, you said to him, say, so Sidella have more funds than the administration. Yo, brother, it's poor, brother, man. <laughs> poor, my virgin. It's poor. It's poor. Yeah. Football, me I tell you, say, without me come from a system with Liberty Aleman. Yo, at the best, when me I play for Excelsior, me take my tablet on time, me go to my bed on time, me eat on time, me chain on time, the, 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 the nurse come on time, we get with lunch at time, mm -hmm. we don't just go, bro, to the tea. So me yeah. I come, a management staff where me understand the business, not only a footballer, but looking at, how things supposed to manage half the pitch. We don't management mm -hmm. and I go nowhere, you know. You probably make a book mm -hmm. up, but no consistent yeah. go there, you know. Brother, yeah. when I that, brother, the management is just totally crap and poor, brother. And I'm not even talking about the JF follow, I'm talking about the whole organization of our football. Look at the check and field. Can you imagine how much big sprint we have on weekend? We don't have someone we call home, proper home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whole thing, the leadership, even at the whole Caribbean, is just poor Virgin. Trust me, yeah. Yeah. we no problem. Yeah. But yeah. I, you know, I mean, I go over my time. You know, I keep it no more longer. Yeah, appreciate your forward and come and share your story, Virgin, because you are one of the man that I respect in the game. I mean, I beg you, stay up on the right track, brother. Cause me, yeah. if me give I'm a poor road, my love and my respect to a person and then me I say yo don't do it me see man I do something and my kind of <laughs> thing brother but you're there on the right track just continue be the journalist who me know you are you understand Biggest, man, and, and, and you continue to strive to Ryan um no second for where you are right now uh, you, you must continue to try to improve and always remember you must treat the guests them with respect because they're your guests. So when somebody come to your yard, you know you grow good and you see your mother when visitors come, treat them good, man. And, 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 and ask them tough questions. Don't disrespect them and ask them that you have. As I tell you, say, you know, bring in that, that, that element in your thing. Treat the guests with respect and punch them hard. Because you say you respect them and punch them hard, they will work with it. But when you're not treat them good and they are punch them hard, no, anything can happen. Yeah, that's already we kick off. So just continue doing a good job, my lad, and continue building. Well, I know, me I look, me I try, me I try, me I really like getting into the politics of football, no? but me, you'd like to see some people. Me, I like when me, me make a presentation the other day with, um, with, with the viewers, them, because the people, them all do say, you're right. Oh, you want Jeff for lockdown? Who you want for going there? So, me, say, based upon the work with Sidella has done, I would give her a chance, but I would put a team of people around her. My vice mm -hmm. president would be Ricardo Fuller. You get to me, I say, my ambassador mm -hmm. on the man side. But I say, boy, listen, I, do, I know you don't have the time, but we need people who have pulling power, who can get in funds, and can, just like what Sidella do on the ambassador side. Where the power she have, she know the people that we can help and fund the program. I would love to see Sidella Mali as president and... You know, we go down. I have a tear. I have a presentation and I make it a whole heap of people. But I mm have -hmm. to and tell you. But would you like to see a, a Sidney Lamali as president? Or you don't think she have the capability? What do I mean? No, but, but, but here why, here why, here why. Here why I would want her as president. You can't swear, but here why I would want her as president. Mm -hmm. I want her to have a free hand to act as the situation demands. Because when you are president, you are tied down. You, you, you're under certain restrictions because of the rules of the federation, promises that you would have made to the delegates to vote you in, and, and you, you don't have the independence of thought and action that somebody like her has. Remember, you know, if she was part of an organization, you know, what she has done for the regular girls, it's highly likely that she would have been able to do it because she would have had certain restrictions. She's just someone on the outside, see a need and just run in and service the need. You know, one of the reasons that people who in a private sector and do well, don't do well in government, 
as we said to you, in a private sector, if you your business now run right, you cannot just come in and fire a manager just to and get your next one and replace him. In a government, they can't do that. You have to go through a process and this. I have a man where you have tried fire for three years and he's still the party peer was here. He's still now, not still that frustrated and you can't get rid of it. So I wouldn't tie her down with those day to day responsibilities. What I would do, I would engage her, yes, in a stronger ambassadorial role than she is currently playing on her own. I said, Mommy, I want you to look from your vantage point. And I want you to make suggestions about the things that you believe ought to be done and how those things ought to be done as well. And you contribute to the development from the But we want tire down, we don't want to give the administrative responsibilities to somebody else. That's just my view. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But what do you say? Fuller, with the knowledge and the wealth of knowledge you have right now, would you... I speak to Fuller. Yeah. I speak does to he, Fuller. Does he, does, he, does he live in the UK? Does he live in the UK? Yes, man, but him talk to Mr. Ryan, he would he would come, but he would work with nobody in the administration. Him say me want oh. a he want a Samuel Eto. He might look on the, the mother of Cameroon way as a player yeah. been in the situation, no know what it takes, get burned, you know what the country want. Would you love to see Fuller? But Fuller I said, said I don't. him not coming with the same administration. Can no one get caught? <laughs> I'd, love, I'd, I'd love to see Ricardo play a role in the football because Ricardo is a youth I respect. We have a very good re re relationship. And um, I think people like those with the international exposure and with the ability to make deals. You need a deal maker. You need as many deal makers as you can get at the helm of the JFF. And I think that he would do well from that perspective. All right. Fair enough. Bridget, it's a pleasure. I really appreciate it, Bridget. Thanks for coming, Bridget. And I am a fan and nothing but love and respect. But just let you know that Man United are combo seven this season, all right? My lad, last year, last year, see? You tell me so a mother thing go Liverpool. A mother thing they tell me, right? Hey. Which part of finish that table? No, but you see the injured and no, 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 no. which part of finish that table, Daddy? We finished fifth. All right then. A man united which who had a Ordinary season. We come third. I would want to Mickey Mouse Cup. Or Mickey Mouse Cup, what you did win the year before. So I'm just saying that me had a better season than you last year. You didn't have no position to give me no talk. You know who can't talk to me? City, who win the league. And City, who win the FA Cup. And City, who win the Champions League. No other club can give me no talk because nobody else no win nothing. The two clubs that in England that win something like, oh, West Ham. West Ham win one Curry Road Cup. <laughs> me with the Mickey Mouse Cup and sitting with the three big cup then. So West Ham can give me a little talk, but nobody else can talk to the count and win nothing. This means this season, anybody is capable of anything, so when the season doesn't talk to me. You understand? That may I tell you. Uh, Bridget, it's a pleasure and thing. I really appreciate you taking the time out and thing. Chase if I the athlete this Bridget, we need to speak to you, Bridget. Cause when you come on to fix it, I want to tell you, you know, I do a check and feel video you know, and a whole heap of coach reached out to me and said, Ryan, we need the help over here. So, see, my can be for the check and feed. So, at least, if I use this, link me up on Instagram. Or uh, if not, my WhatsApp number is right there. So, you can WhatsApp me and we have a discussion. I would love to sit down one on one and talk to you. All right? Virgin, what do you have to say to the fans? Last thing before you leave. Um, listen, sports is, sports is the way out. I love the fact how sports change. You may youth, your parents used to feel like them fail if you tell them they are going to a career as sport. If you pursue sports, sports as a career, I you know, cut school sharp and all them things. They ever told what this not now go on now. And the total opposite. People have forced them children in that sport. So if you if you are anybody you know have youngsters who have the aptitude for sports, help them. You know, you don't have to get coach you know. All you can do is motivate, encourage. Them things are very, very important, especially for young people going through the turbulence of puberty. The teenage years are very difficult to navigate. That is how you help to build the nation, by building the ones around you. I want to never take that seriously. Love the sports here where you can continue to support Ryan even if he's a Liverpool man. And just understand that forums like his are what makes the football democracy and the sporting democracy rich because... Here is where you get discussions 
that those who are failing in office would not want you to have. And this is by virtue of having these discussions that we know what is wrong, know how to fix them, and get them fixed. So big up on yourself. All right, Bridget. No flow of respect, Bridget. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. All big right, up. sir. Cool. Big up. Big up. So here we have it, people. Jar Davis. Anyway, people, we have a reggae girls interview. We're going to start in less than a minute. What time now? It's going to be five o'clock. Tuning in to that one right now, four p.m. Eastern time. Five o'clock, four p.m. Eastern time. No, four p.m. Jamaican time. Five o'clock Eastern time. My apology. Rooney, big up yourself. Dennis. Big up yourself. Stefan, big up yourself. Doc, from out of Florida, brother. Big up yourself, brother. All right. The man, they must say, me no for call the man cheeky yard man. The man is a cheeky yard man, bitch. Trust me, bro. The man is a cheeky yard man, brother. You understand? Anyway, people. Um. Anyway, we are going to start the live right now because the player reach and the player says she in the background. So, Come over there right now. All I want to we are going to interview our regular girls. We need to support people. That's going to start in a less than a minute. All right? So we're upon short timing, people. 